Yo, how's it going, people? What up? How's it going? Uh, Bob, PS5 Pros, I guess if you're looking at, you know, the low end PCs, it probably will be. But if you're looking at anything like mid spec to higher, it probably won't. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of people still game on 1080p monitors with really bad graphics cards. You know, people with the 3080s, the 4080s, the 4090s, they're not the majority. Gaming trash. What do you think? Do you think it's going to piss off enough people? <laughs> Going to end Xbox carrier? No. A console is supposed to be the entryway into gaming. Phones cost 1000 Yeah, but phones can do more, right? Phones aren't just consoles. Phones are pretty much mini PCs. They can do a lot more than you, a console can. Oh, it is great to be streaming again. Uh, sorry about last week. It was Eid and I was away doing all sorts of family stuff that I had to do under obligation. But we are back. Normally this time, we're going to be doing multiple streams this week as per usual. Oh, this fan better come on. Please come on. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. They broke my fan. Chat. They broke my fan. No, no, no. I'm not risking my... Oh, God, that's not... That is risk. That is being dangerous. Damn it. That should do it. Are you good? You're not perfect, but you'll do. No, they broke my uh, normal fan. This room gets rather warm and they broke the bottom of the fan that swivels around. And well, it's annoying. Let's put it that way. There we go. Hey, Rabbi, how's it going? It was Eid last week, yes. So, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday was Eid last week, hence why I wasn't streaming at all. Um, I did say in uh, a few of the videos that I won't be around. So, if you did check out those, I probably should have left a community note as well. But I did say in Discord as well. But yeah, so Eid is over. Kind of done with all of that now. So... Oh, it's like Easter, then Eid, and then other stuff. It was just getting too much. There is only so much amount of food you can eat before you start to see food and just don't want to see food no more. <laughs> I'm doing good, Remy. Jay, it may very well be. It may very well be. How are you, Remy? Uh, anime, as of the video that I made, that is pretty much all we know. They did start developing it. Um, I reached out to the person and th they started developing it pre-COVID. And then when, once COVID hit, they had to stop. 
but they are back on to making it and it is an xbox exclusive which is weird Hey, Leaf. Uh, no, we're not going to get a new gen this year. Uh, anime? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, literally have no information on it other than uh, an art with the character holding an xbox and a wand that's it it is going to be voiced so that's kind of cool and they are recording the voice lines at the moment while looking for people to record the voice lines rabbi we're probably looking about 2026 maybe Nah, I don't think 2025. We're looking 2026 when we get the new console. I mean, the artwork looks like it, right? And I still think we're going to get um, Project New Gen as well. I still think we're going to get that with the NetEase partnership. No reason why we can't. And the Tower of Fantasy license ends this year i think in a few months in a couple months so it'll be interesting to see if sony wants to double down on that or leave it up to go to other platforms it's too early rabbi it's too early four years is too early I think five years per generation right now is about the norm. Seven years was abnormal. You know, I think it was like 10 years for the PS2. That was even more abnormal. But six, seven years is just too big of a gap right now. If you do something that long, then you need a mid-gen refresh. You just do. You 100% need it. But at five years, I think it's okay. That's the sweet spot. Four years is still too early. But we do have a lot of news to go through today. Kalos, there's a lot of games in development and every time i hear that they're in development it triggers me <laughs> i want them to not be in development and start coming out uh me and steve actually in chat were having a discussion about this not long ago i think there's a good chance that microsoft will change to intel intel and nvidia for the next generation console and if they do change to intel and nvidia next gen i'm really seriously curious if they're going to partner with geforce now like ads in proper partner and bring geforce now to xbox as part of that partnership that would be insane right I know it's cloud gaming, but you're essentially playing your PC games that you have on Steam through GeForce Now over the cloud on your Xbox. Uh, more powerful, Leaf. It'll be more powerful. I mean, for the next gen, we're looking at games like Blade, um, Gears, Halo, 
and I expect them to be 60 FPS. Have you seen the Iron Neo uh, flip? It's pretty much a DS. The new Iron Neo, Iron Neo uh, PC handheld. Perfect Dark is another one. We actually uh, have a little bit of a tease for that one. But let's get started with the show. We've got like 40 people in here. I will try to, going forward, put up a... Uh, at least a placeholder for the stream like a day before or a couple of days before so people can know when i'm streaming properly what time i'm going to be live or aim to be live um tomorrow i'm going to be finishing off 16 finally and if we finish 16 early then we're going to jump into something else but that's the plan for tomorrow unless we get big news and then i'm going to be reporting on the news first but this one over here what do you think of ign's essentially their position here they would have preferred fallout to be a weekly episode instead of an all-in-one drop i could do yeah I could, uh after 16 i can definitely jump into fallout 3 we could definitely do that that is something that can work I mean, I don't think they're going to release a new gen console, Rabbi, and release it at 30. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah, but Steve, there's a reason behind the madness. And unfortunately, you're not seeing it. Is anyone else seeing the reason behind the madness of what IGN is saying? Is anyone seeing it? Because I personally partially agree with IGN here. I'm going to have to bleach my mouth and rinse it with soap and stuff. But there is a reason for it. Only 120 FPS... Uh, no, we're not going to get... That's not going to happen. We'll be lucky with 60 FPS next gen. 60 FPS standard would be good enough. 120 will be on the previous gen stuff. So anything on the... On the I'll call it the Xbox Series X2. Stuff that's on the Xbox Series X will probably either hit 60 or 120. But anything made for the X2 will probably be 60. You're wrong, Rum. Rum Punch. I mean, media will definitely benefit from it. Content creators will definitely benefit from it. But there is one other faction that does benefit from it. And do you know who that is? You, me, and everyone in this chat. If they have friends. Because 120 FPS requires a lot of resources. It's not easy to hit 120 FPS. You're going to pretty much guarantee... You're not going to hit... If you go to 120 FPS, you're likely going to be outputting at 1080p. It's not worth it. Hey, Quackers. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like binging. But. See, back in the day, does anyone remember, like, does anyone remember a show called Heroes? Save the cheerleader, save the world. I'm just using that as an example. But. That was a weekly episode. And there are many that are weekly episodes. And what it gave rise to is 
people talking about the episodes what's going to happen next where is it going you know what could you know it just it, it, it allowed people to have that dialogue that conversation to theory craft and it was fun to see the different ideas and the different theories people had and then everyone would kind of sit down that next week sit down and watch it then they'd go into work the next day and everyone would be talking about that episode and then what's going to happen the following episode and so that is why that's what i miss personally Zrogdol bingo console xbox series how much be next new gen console uh, I still think it's going to be about five, 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 six hundred pound. Having friends is overrated. <laughs> I mean, it's like Dragon Ball Z, right? You watch the episode of Dragon Ball Z, the freezer arc, and then you'd be like waiting. Oh my God, what's going to happen next week? You know, the episode starts. Goku spends 26 minutes of the 30 minutes powering up his keyboard. And then the last four minutes is spent with the credits. And then you're like, oh my god, is he going to fire that ball for the next episode? Or are we still going to get another 26 minutes of him charging up again? Kind of thing. <laughs> you all were there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not sure about anything, Rabbi. I don't work for Microsoft. I'm just making assumptions. I'm just making assumptions based on educated guesses. For JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, we used to have JoJo's Fridays, and then Netflix just put the whole of season six in one, so it killed the talk of JoJo's Fridays. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about, Leaf. That's what I'm talking about. It can't you you kind of lose that dialogue that discussion and i think it would have done the episode you know the actual fallout tv series a lot more benefit as a drunkard weekly sucks because i forget what happens by the time the next episode is well you could always wait till the end and then watch it at the end I mean, who knows, Ravi? Who knows? I think the next Xbox Series console is going to be a good one. Nah, no one wants that, Steve. Only you. Only you. <laughs> but, are you all ready? For a Microsoft Rewards, fans are preparing for a new era on Xbox this week. No games, but they are giving you a new Microsoft Rewards. You know, it would help. It really would help if I actually turn this off. You guys are wondering what the hell I'm talking about, right? And I'm like, I'm chatting away, talking away, and you guys are like, man, what is this douchebag talking about? We have no idea what he's even looking at. This douchebag just needs to learn how to do this stuff properly. Like, what's his end game here? I know what you're all saying. Because apparently I can't even get that right. Oh my god. Because apparently I can't even get that right. Uh, in regards to Steam... That's something that we're going to find out sooner or later. As for the PS5 games, 
on Xbox via PC versions, I suspect Sony will block them. One way or another. I mean, if I was Sony, I'd block them. Unless they're going to be on GeForce now. But I suspect Sony will try to block them at least. Because all it needs to do is get the API call for an Xbox and it will block the game from booting. Joshua! It's a good series, dude. It's not about Microsoft allowing it. It's about making sure the infrastructure of the OS is capable of handling it and Steam being okay with it. I mean, I mean, as uh, Steve said there, Sony's already blocked their games off GeForce Now. Gids, uh, God of War used to be on GeForce Now and they took it away. So... It's down to Sony if they allow it or not. And my guess is that they probably won't. Unless Hiroki's still in charge. That guy seems to like money more than anything else. So it's quite possible. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. And I think she's a great person for the series, by the way. She is so innocently stupid. It, it absolutely works. And her character development along the way. Good stuff. Yeah, I actually started playing uh, Fallout 76 recently. Did you know that the Steam version and the Game Pass PC version, they're not cross-play, but your progress transfers between the games? Did you know that? Hey, why so serious? It is absolutely amazing. But yeah, did you know that your progress between PC Game Pass and Steam transfers? Uh, I'm not worried that the Xbox games will be... The app versions will be bad from PC to Xbox. But... I don't think the PS5 games will work. But the Steam games will probably run medium to low. That would be my assumption. But it's better than nothing, right? It's not going to push no high or um, ultra. All right, now we can actually talk about the Microsoft rewards without you guys wondering what the hell I'm on about. So we're getting the new rewards. It's coming this week. Who's excited? Nah, it's not going to be high. Ain't no one going to go and start re-editing those games. Or you know, retouching those games. At the end of the day, the Xbox, well, the consoles in general, PS5 and Series consoles, their RAMs is just little. It's it's not a lot. And how the system handles that RAM is different to the way Windows handles its RAM. Now, if it was running, say, like a Linux OS, maybe, but. It's already running a version of Windows, and I just don't think it's uh, it's going to be as simple as people think it is. Uh, my assumption would be with the next-gen console in 2026. But, but, we could see it by the end of the year, at least with a prototype working in a showcase. Steve, 100%. Then that would have no problems. For now, at least. How would mouse-only games work on Xbox? Well, Leaf, uh, if you haven't seen, 
they've already started experimenting with mouse and keyboard on xCloud and once they've got that rolled out properly over the next year over this year I suspect that's going to move over to console as well this is all in preparation for their hybrid setup that's going to be for the next gen console oh there's it's already out all right sweet sweet you're all in for a treat you're all in for a treat you can get lots of points so get stuck in get your points and get your freebies that's all i'm gonna say okay who wants to have a laugh who wants to see something really really funny Anyone? Because this did make me laugh. This next news is it's pure satire, but it made me giggle. It made me laugh. And I can't believe how stupid this person is. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that there for a second. It reads, I love Metroid and all, but it would be cool if we got a female protagonist in the next game. <laughs> uh, Starfield expansion, I've heard it's been delayed till next year. Oh no, is, is this the real Unleashed? No way. <laughs> Welcome, dude. Welcome. That is not a troll post. This is a full-on Nintendo fanboy saying this. Steve, that's what I think is going on right now. We've literally heard nothing from Shattered Space. We're coming up to halfway of the year. And it's, uh, it's a bit yikes, my dude. And from, what I've, from speaking to a few people, they've told me 2025. Obviously, that's uh, nothing confirmed. But I've just been told 2025. We'll see what happens in June. I suspect in the June showcase we'll see something. It's not going to be shadow dropped in June, so don't expect that. But if it look at it this way, if it's going to be delayed until 2025, it's not going to be a small update. It's not going to be a small DLC. It's going to be huge. Unity Dev, how's it going? It's the real Unleashed. How's it going, my dude? Oh my god, it's J-Dub as well. They're all in here today. How's it going, J-Dub? But yeah, I thought this was pretty funny because uh, my dude, who's a hardcore Nintendo fanboy who pretty much has a Princess Peach love doll. Uh, don't ask how I know that. It's already bleaching my mind. Um, doesn't actually know that Samus Aran is a female. Hey, J Dub, when are you going to unblock me on Twitter? That's a good question, J Cola. I don't think they will. But no, seriously, J Dub Unleashed, welcome to the uh, channel. But yeah, 
It's uh, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's the real J Dub. I mean, the PS5 Pro is deemed doomed to uh, break its own uh, contracts at this point. <laughs> Uh, PS5, yeah, they are losing access to 25 games. They are. Uh, it's all fun and games. But Perfect Dark seems to be... Uh, it's time. So will we actually see something in June? The death of Xbox is not upon us, dude. I know. I know you need that engagement, but dude, seriously, it is not happening. It's not happening. Oh. But I think in June, we're actually going to see some perfect dark. I've been hearing whispers about this, and it seems like uh, June, we probably will be hearing something. Did you guys hear about that studio that got shut down? I made a video on it where the leaks, where someone's uh, revealed their source and the guy just shut the whole studio down and called it a day. That's hardcore, man. But this is why you never reveal your sources. And folks, I know there's a bunch of people in here that do have like information and do get their news from places. Don't ever reveal your source, man. You're playing with people's lives. Seriously, do not do it. Uh, no, that was uh, someone... That was the State of Decay, I think? Or State of so state of Something. He, ju he, just, he just called it quits and shut it down. Basically, they, they had to let the shareholder, the investors know of the breach and the, because the breach was from internal and not hacked like it normally is uh the investors basically lost all confidence and withdrew all funding and that meant the studio was gone and they, they decided mutually to uh close the whole thing down no no i i i think it's a good warning to people if you are going to talk about stuff and in this situation a lot of information was revealed, right? Companies, profit and losses. I mean, this was above and beyond what you would expect from a leak. We're talking about the company's finances. This was espionage. Um, but just don't reveal your sources. I know people online keep saying, what's your source? And if you don't have a source, we don't believe you. No one should ever tell you their source. You protect your source because they're the one that feeds you information. And if you reveal your source, they get fired. There is no fact. Unleashed. When did you and Phil become good friends? Or Satya Nadella? When did you become good friends, buddy? <laughs> you attending their tea party? Actually, that sounds more disturbing the more I say it. But hey, at least there's one thing that we uh, can all agree on, right? Unleashed. Starfield will forever live rent-free in your head. <laughs> I'm pretty sure at this point you are still dreaming about Starfield. And the fact that you want it on PS5 makes it all the sweeter because uh, all that shitting you did on it and now you want it is, uh, is quite funny. This game? This is Perfect Dark on the N64. This is a glorious game. But this is the one that's interesting here. Uh, Xbox's next-gen consoles reportedly coming in 2026 will also launch a Nintendo Switch-like dockable handheld. Now, a little bit of tidbit information that I've been told. Um, again, take it with a grain of salt. I've got, I'm not going to reveal my source. I'm not going to tell you where it's come from. I mean, let's just say it's come from another solar system. 
I'll give you that much. But um, apparently, from what I've heard, and take this with a grain of salt, the next-gen Xbox will allow you to play native versions of the games on Xbox, but also allow you to install the PC versions of the game on your Xbox as well. Now, I don't know how true that is. I don't even know why that would, where the point of that would be. Well, I guess there is a point to it because at that point you can tweak the graphics, tweak the performance to get whatever resolution performance you want. But apparently that is going to be something that the next gen consoles do. Now, again, we are still two years out from any real concrete information and about seven months out from the actual reveal of the next gen hardware. But that is what I've been told. I trust the person that's told me. Obviously, things can change, but that is what I've been told. What do you think about that? No source, no burner. Well, unfortunately, hey, I'll tell you what. Steve, just for you, I'll give you some Heinz ketchup sauce. None of that cheap sauce. I'll give you Heinz ketchup sauce. Mate, the PS5 Pro has nothing on my PC. <laughs> it literally has nothing on my PC. <laughs> You'll take my way instead? That's your poison of sauce? Man, you are a weird chap. No one likes bar mate. Uh, Unleashed is a good sport. A little bit of a grifter, but it's a good sport. <laughs> I mean, Joshua, we're supposed to find out at the end of the year what the new Xbox looks like. They're going to be doing a reveal. Well, according to what Sarah said. But that is uh, interesting. That this is now looking at what they're doing. I'm playing nice. Jose Rafael, a Windows Xbox hybrid would be amazing. Had loads of fun on the OG Perfect Dark 64. Xbox did a fantastic job remastering and preserving that game. I really enjoyed what they did on the Xbox version of that. But I'm not crazy, right? They did remove one of the tracks in that game. Uh, in that Mediterranean level. They did change or remove the music, right? I've been looking for that track forever. I can't... I, I could never find it. It wasn't even in the OST anymore. I'm guessing they lost the license to it. I mean, Jada, there's no surprise there, right? <laughs> There's no surprise there, bud. But how you doing, Jay? You doing good? You ready for Xbox games on the PS5 Pro? Well, you got Hi-Fi Rush. You should play that. You've played it, right? And Pentiment. You've played Pentiment, right? I expect I expect it uh, platinumed by now, J-Dub. The Pentiment. I'm expecting, uh, you know, 240 FPS with your PS5 Pro on Pentiment. I should have taken the piss out of that game, but it's too easy. <laughs> But let's move quickly over to some PlayStation news that I was going to look at. I was going to leave it to the end, but since uh, 
We've got the pony crowd in here. Let's uh, jump over there first. So, we have this post over here. PS5 Pro titles are coming. Games dropping later this year look to take advantage of the PS5 Pro. Not look, but apparently it's being mandated by Sony to take advantage. Any game after August, the 20, August 2024 needs to have or be better than the PS5 version of the game, which means it either needs better ray tracing, better performance, or better resolution. Now, this obviously causes Sony an enormous amount of problems. Now, we've also uh, got this article over here, which pretty much says the same thing by The Verge. For the PS5 Pro, PlayStation wants games to offer a PS5 Pro exclusive graphics mode that will combine PSSR up to, to upscale resolution, a constant 60 FPS, and or add increased ray tracing effects. So why is this a problem? Oh, Jay, I'm the same. I've got a PS5, I've got a Switch, I've got a PC, I've got an Xbox, I've got a Steam Deck. Chaos and Microsoft bringing Xbox exclusive to PlayStation. Do you think that's something that they will change their mind on in the future or will it get worse eventually? Uh, I don't see any real major titles going over. I think, like, when I say major titles, I don't see anything like Starfield or Co. going over. But the AA stuff... I just don't think they care. But the flagship titles, I think they're going to stay on Xbox. But the really smaller titles, I just don't think they care. But then again, Ori isn't on PlayStation, right? And that would have been an obvious choice and that would have sold bucket loads. But they chose not to do that, so... It's uh, interesting. But... Why is this interesting? Why is this important? Yeah, Halo's never coming to PlayStation 5 Unleashed. But although I have to wonder, why... Do you guys have no games? Is that why you're uh, port begging so much? I've literally never seen a community port beg so much. I've never seen a community port beg so much as much as the PlayStation community. I mean, they clearly don't have enough good games. I mean, you've got remasters and remakes. I get that, right? And when the PS5 Pro launches, you're going to get the Uncharted remake, the Last of Us Part 1 remake, the Last of Us Part 2 remake. Uh, you're probably going to get Final Fantasy 7 Remake remake or Enhanced Edition for the PS5 Pro. Uh... Gran Turismo Enhanced Edition. You know, you're going to get all of these games. You're going to get Babylon's Fall uh, Remake. Quantum Error. I remember you, Unleashed. You was capping for un Quantum Error. What happened to that, dude? What happened with Quantum Error? You were salivating over that game. What happened? <laughs> what happened with Quantum Error, dude? <laughs> you got Quantum Slate now coming for you. <laughs> what post was that? Steve, I didn't delete any posts. Uh, what's this? I'll have a look in a sec, Rabbi. Man, they're going real quiet now with Quantum Error, haven't they? It's alright, though. It's alright, chat. It's alright. They got 
they're all foaming up so they can uh, get that stars in their eyes. <laughs> you had to rescue your cat. <laughs> oh, nothing much. Imagine buying a new generation console and get a bunch of remasters. No, it's graphical fidelity as well. It's the graphics and uh, fidelity have to be equal. Man, your cat was petrified. Uh, until Dawn remastered. What is the Star Wars news? What is the Star Wars news, Ravi? That you're going crazy over. Ubisoft responds to Star Wars Outlaw Season Pass Backlash. Insists Jabba the Hutt is part of the experience for all players. Ubisoft has responded to the ongoing backlash against the Star Wars Outlaw Season Pass, insisting Jabba the Hutt is part of the experience for all players. The publishers come under fire for locking the Jabba, Jabba's Gambit mission behind Outlaw's controversial Season Pass, which comes with the $109.99 Gold Edition, even more expensive, $129.99. Play the exclusive Jabba's Gambit mission at launch. The season pass explodes just as Kay is putting together a crew for Canto Bite Heist. She receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself. Turns out that the ND5 owes Jabba a debt from years ago and he has come to collect. The revelation sparked a backlash with some players criticizing Ubisoft's decision to lock a mission behind a season pass for what is a full price single player only game. All right. Okay, okay. Why is they what where why is okay. Okay, look. Why is there a backlash to this? Why is there a backlash? Seriously, guys, why is there a backlash to this? Uh, Sin, from what I remember, yes. The parity was full. Features, graphics, performance, battle pass, everything. Okay, but why wasn't this... Okay, look, Steve, you're saying they, they're paywalling missions. Leafstorm, you're saying Ubisoft has been doing this for ages. But why wasn't this an issue when Sony Money had an exclusive mission for Hogwarts Legacy? Where was a single person making a complaint about this? IGN didn't complain. Eurogamer didn't complain. Metro didn't complain. Game Rent didn't complain. None of them said a single thing about when Sony blocked a whole mission behind uh, the PlayStation version for a whole year. Hell, when they did it on Destiny for three years, they celebrated it. When they did it with COD for a year for a whole game mode, no one better than I and no one gave a shit. So why do they care now? So why is this, why is this, I mean, if you allowed it back then to take place and you fested it and you allowed it and you nurtured it and you built up to it, why is it a problem now when someone else decides, hey, we're going to do what Sony does? So why, why is it an issue now? Wait, why do I get, by the time the PS5 Pro drops, then a blade will be $20. Sony gets a pass, Kelsey, you notice. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see where I'm coming from? Like, I get, I, I've had a problem with this for a long time. I've not liked it. I, I, I hate the fact that companies do this. You know, if I'm getting a less of a game, I should technically pay less to play. That's the way I see it. Oh, 
Oh shit. Pal, you're back in action. You've been gone for a long time. Ever since the lawyer dude was after you. Wait, it, Pearl, are you unleashed? Uh, Sin, it wasn't. It was flat out exclusive. So on PlayStation, you paid, you got extra content. On Xbox, you paid the same price and got less content. So why wasn't the Xbox or the Switch version priced at a cheaper rate? Oh, he is. My dude, you exited from Icon from that era website so fast when he came for you. That was impressive, dude. You deleted your Twitter and everything. I was quite impressed with that. All the dude wanted was an apology. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you yeeted out real quick. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't, like, it's not a good thing that they're doing, right? I've never been a fan of this. I've never been a supporter of this. I think it's absolutely shit. But it's been going on for so long. And when Sony has been doing this for years, no one has cared. So why is it a problem now? Yeah, they're the same person. So, you know, like I said, I don't support this sort of action. It's horrible, right? It's horrible. But it's been going on for years. Like, it's nothing new. So, I mean, at least everyone gets the content if you get the season pass. I mean, they cut Spider-Man 2 real good, man. Uh, they took Venom's story out of that game real fast. This isn't a big mission. This is just a small side quest mission. This is going to stay on the season pass. They're not going to change that. Do you know why they're not going to change it? Because people are going to buy it. People are going to pay money for it. And they are going to buy... The 109.99 gold edition to get it. Because they want the goodies. They're going to get it and get the season pass with it. And get the extra content with it. And all that fluffy stuff. Or even pay for the 1299 uh, edition. All this drama is a waste of time. People are going to pay. I mean, that's that's awful, right? I mean, I did it from 52 million. And I worked out the percentage was... A uh, little over 3% of PlayStation users bought Rebirth. That's a good way to support your, uh, your exclusive partners. <laughs> oh, shit. Where did the pony mob come from today? <laughs> did they have like a stables meeting and decide today was the day that they're going to swoop in? I need in on this stables meeting, guys. You need to, you need to bring me in. And I need to put a, a, a listening device in there. I know, right, Steve? <laughs> Rabbi, the season pass should remove it, but it's not going to remove it. It's just not going to happen. 
they're looking for content. Oh, they are looking to clip me left, right, and center, which means I've made it. They're looking for a reason to clip me right now. <laughs> But yeah, so this is actually going to be interesting because it is full on parity. And if they decide that they're going to maintain this, it's going to be interesting to see how they actually go around it. Now, obviously, I haven't seen the contract. No one has seen the contract outside of PlayStation and Microsoft. So there might be clauses in there that we don't know about, right? So let's make that clear that there might be clauses in there that revealed that a PS5 Pro was coming. Certain features are going to be there. And, you know, that would have been labeled out in advance so they can make sure that they can avoid certain situations. But based on what we know right now, this could be a problem unless Sony's mandate isn't actually a mandate and uh, it's, you know, as long as the game runs a constant 60 FPS, which is one of these three, and let's be real, Call of Duty always runs at 60 FPS, I guess that should be enough to tick one of the boxes, right? They wouldn't need to upscale anything or add ray tracing to make the versions any different. The fact that it's got a 60 FPS, in theory, should be enough. Why? Because they like money. And they know that people will spend money to get all the content. It's really that simple. They like money. Money's good. Uh, the music? It is called... Uh... Nadoello, I want you, I need you. It's the only tune I could find that doesn't get me copyrighted. It's literally the only tune. I have used everything that I can think of. Even stuff that other channels don't get copyrighted on. As soon as I use them, I get copyrighted. But this is the only one that I found that doesn't get me copyrighted. So I'm happy to use it. Until I get copyrighted. Then I'll start looking for something else. Uh, imagine paying another 600 plus quid for some lighting. <laughs> the Giga Chad theme? I've not tried that. I could try that next stream. Does that mean Xbox doesn't need to have parity now if Sony breaks the contract? I mean, technically, if what I think is the case and Sony decides that they will not bend their mandate then they are in breach of their own contract uh lo-fi music gets you copyrighted instantly i've been i've used it four times and i've been copyrighted four times i've contacted the people from lo-fi they said they've seen that it's been copyrighted they're gonna whitelist me and get it removed and they never did all four times and i privated those videos so they don't get any money they're scam artists But if you've got anything that's you know that is not going to get copyrighted, send it my way. I'm pretty flexible in trying different stuff. But it has been... I mean, chat will tell you. I've been trying different music forever. And I've been dealing... I mean, I'm the, the YouTube's copyright policies for music is stupid. But having something in the background is almost a must, man. Well, that's the thing. Every game coming from August 2024 has to be enhanced for PS5 Pro. I mean, they wouldn't sue PlayStation. There's no reason to, that, to sue PlayStation. Hey, Chris. Uh, Bob MPC, NBC. 
Uh, I'll have a look in a bit, but um, if you join my Discord, even if it is just until I send you the file, feel free to uh, do that or follow me on Twitter and I'll DM it to you. You can unfollow after if you want. It's not a problem. I'm... They've got enough problem people to send them already. But, uh... This is the part that actually was really funny. PlayStation 5 Pro is needed for advancing visuals performance as there's no untapped PS5 potential due to homo homogenized CPU GPU design, which basically means the PS5 has actually hit its peak already after three years. It's basically where you're seeing the performance of the PS5 now hitting those 30 FPSs, 25 FPSs, it's hit peak. It can't do any more. So they need that PS5 Pro to give that next-gen bump, well, mid-gen bump, so they can actually start hitting higher numbers. Uh, the problem with the problem they're having, Day Reezy, is that unlike the Series S, which is still a problem, by the way, for them, uh, the Series S was available from the launch, right? From the start of the generation. They've had these kits from before. The PS5 Pro <coughs> is coming mid-gen. It's new hardware, it's new tech, and if things are done differently, which it looks like it will be as they're adding new software new hardware new you know new features that they are mandated now to you know utilize it means that they now have to mid-gen learn new stuff so it's a hell of a lot more of a problem for them unlike the series s and the x where essentially they're the same machine just one is underpowered and one is not otherwise they're pretty much the same consoles the PS5 Pro and the PS5 are fundamentally different consoles. Uh, I'm hoping we'll see the handheld, but if we don't, it's going to be at Christmas along with the new console that we're going to see at the end of the year. I personally think the PS5 Pro is a marketing thing just to keep them relevant while they figure out where they're going for next gen. I mean, I think there's going to be a PS6. I mean, that's a no-brainer for me. There's no reason for them not to do that. I don't think we're at a state now with anything for them not to do that. And I also don't think that they really have the setup, the infrastructure for PC Cloud in place just yet to allow them to make that smoother transition i think they need another generation for that but i think this generation you're going to see them making those moves and if they can get the playstation launcher released this year that will give you a strong indication of where they're going once that P uh, pc launcher for playstation launches that's the direction that they're going to be slowly transitioning to But the fact that the PS5 now has no untapped potential. Basically, they've hit the maximum they can hit with the PS5. They literally can't do anything else. The PS5 is either going to start to struggle. Or they're going to have to, you know, continue doing those performance modes where the game drops down to 720p and 640p. And... At that point, what's the point of a performance mode? I get it's good to have options, and I've been arguing with a few people in my Discord that having options is better than no options. I'll, you know, I'll, I, I agree with that. But at what point does that option become a problem? You know, if it drops down to 640p, is it really worth it at that point? Is it even worth it at that point? If you're to maintain 60, you're dropping down to 
640 or 700p is it really worth it uh that's a good question actually i mean blu-rays depending on the blu-ray that they're burning the data on i think the playstation 5 can read dual-sided blu-rays and it can also read uh 100 or 200 gigabyte blu-rays i think the xbox can only read a 60 or 70 gigabyte blu-rays but i think the blu-rays drive on the ps5 is slightly more advanced i mean it is their technology after all Uh, the frame rates in 16 are the reason why I still haven't finished it. For the longest time, they made me physically sick. Uh, the way it was jumping up and down, it, it was horrible. But um, I'm slowly getting used to it. And I'm almost finished with that game now, thankfully. Almost done with it. But, you know, there's a point where the performance mode no longer makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, I don't see the point in having it. Although I did see one guy today complaining that um, apparently every PC gamer that sits down in front of a game spends three hours tweaking their game. Like, where do these people come from? How many of you on PC actually spend three hours in the settings, not character creation, because that's a full day job, but settings where you spend all day <laughs> tweaking your settings to get the best performance? Let's see if J-Dub has unblocked me. Chat, do you think he's unblocked me? Do you think he unblocked me? Nope, I am still blocked. J-Dub, you let me down. You still blocked me. Uh, you can if you don't do the WWW. Um, and HTTP stuff and just put the rest. Uh, he had to be blocked from ages ago. I don't even remember why at this point. Yeah, that's the problem, Day Reezy, and that is why they're not happy with it. By the way, folks, if you're enjoying the content, do hit that like and subscribe button. We're trying to get to 7,000 subs where we'll be doing an awesome giveaway at 7,000 subs. Sully, I genuinely have no idea why I actually, uh, what I actually did. So, I probably did something. I'm not going to claim innocence because I can be a twat at times as well. Yeah, Steve, I think they've gone back to their stables. They, they they came in with, like... They came in full force. <laughs> they were looking for a reason to uh, clip and run. But I haven't seen anything by them. So, I haven't done anything just yet. As a PC gamer, I spend 10-15 minutes tops and settings, then tweak it as necessary. Uh, term in, I think that's about right. I mean, I probably spend a little less than that. I think I spend about... Three, four minutes. Max. I mean, what I normally do is I go in. I set everything to ultra. Start the game. If my PC dies, then I knock it down to high. 
I basically go through the presets until I get something close to 60, if it's not above 60. And then once I'm there, then I'll do a little bit of tweaking to get it just right. Uh, Salt, I think it's going to be Intel. I think they're moving away. They're going to want to move away from AMD. And I also think that if they go with Intel and NVIDIA, they're probably going to partner up with GeForce now. And that will be interesting. Because GeForce now already works with Game Pass, right? So if they actually get GeForce now working on Xbox, which in theory they can just use a browser portal to it but if they actually get it set up and working properly through an app that opens up a whole new uh, avenue of gaming for xbox users don't underestimate the the benefits of cloud and he's got loose to cross for a bit. Now they've been quarantined back into the stables. But apparently Sony is working on 8K resolution support for the PS5 Pro. Even though it's going to be upscaling 4K. Yeah. The 8K target may be achievable using the Pro's PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which essentially means it's not running internally native at 8K. I mean, this already tells you, right, that it's not running native 8K because the moment you're using upscaling tech, it's lowering the resolution of your game internally to upscale it to maintain performance. It's just upscaling. I, I, I genuinely don't even see the point of this. This is like complete and utter pointless. Bro, the PS5 Pro ain't doing 8K. Stop. I mean, it might at 240 internal resolution. <laughs> I mean, it might, right? How many people even have 8K TVs? I mean, 8K is just stupid, right? I don't think this is even worth talking about. But it's going to be something that they do talk about. But it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. So do you remember a time when Xbox came out with the Series S? And people were saying that devs were going to have a problem developing for two consoles. And that devs were complaining that they were developing for two different uh, specs of consoles. And all the ponies were out there saying, you know, it, the Series S was a mistake. And that now they're having to develop for the X and the S, which means it's holding it back. So will this be the same for the PS5 and the PS5 Pro? Because now they have two aggressively different specs to deal with. Right? One actually uses different hardware and architecture. So will the, would, do you think they're going to have that same energy? Do you think they're going to have that same, you know mentality going towards that or is it just gonna be playstation good xbox bad mm. 
Man, Quantum Error. That game flopped hard. That game came and died so quick it was a joke. That is Nicolia. But seriously though, Quantum Error died faster than Suicide Squad. Let that sink in. Quantum Error died faster than Suicide Squad. Now, most people believe that Suicide Squad broke a record. But I think, in terms of game failures, I think Quantum Error might actually just take it. That game died faster than... Uh, what was that Square Enix game? I mentioned it earlier. The one that had the watermark uh, graphics. Ah, even Foam Stars is still going. They're season three, man. They're still launching. They're still going. They still have a dedicated player base that's playing. Even if it is four people, they still got it. Babylon's Fall. Even Babylon's Fall lasted longer than Quantum Error. Suicide Squad at least got coverage. I even hate playing his engagement. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, look. At least they get foamed up, right? Wet t-shirt party. Let's go. All right, here's a little bit of a cool bit of PlayStation news. Yes, I said it. Cool bit of PlayStation news because it's done custom. It's got nothing to do with Sony. This is the PS Hanami, my handmade PlayStation 1 portable that I designed and built in one month. It uses real PS1 motherboard that I cut in half, folded like a book, and rewired, no emulation. So this is this dude's... The dude literally took the PlayStation and did what Sony couldn't do. They literally made a native PS1 handheld. I've seen the GameCube version. My dude going through that homebrew like crazy. I see those uh, bias files right at the top. I'm just impressed that he managed to get a, the actual thing working. I love when I, I love when people do this sort of thing. It's it's really creative and really cool. But you can see like the whole s square screen with a square soft. <laughs> that was not in that no pun intended, by the way. I wonder if it's gonna have letterboxes on the side. No, it's stretched. I just think this is like really cool shit. Like, the, you know, I'd love to see like an Xbox OG version of this. And if we continue scrolling down, he actually has pictures of how he managed to do it. Look at that. That's a minefield, man. <laughs> Look at that. 
the only problem is that there is no fan inside this, so it does get a little warm, apparently. I just want the new Xbox handheld now. I mean, the new Xbox handheld is going to be awesome, right? But that's crazy, right? you got two batteries, lithium batteries, rechargeable batteries that's powering the old thing. He literally cut the board in two. He didn't say. And I didn't recall. Uh, it goes up to that 35 degrees. Uh, he doesn't really say anything else about it. Hey, it's got a bigger screen than the PS Vita, that's for sure. So, that's something, right? The Vita screen was no slouch. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything else. But either way, I thought this was really, really cool tech. I thought I'd share it either way. Because uh, it's really cool and I like cool stuff. So, this is the Korean dude. Al Kelly Saburo. Not Korean, but Japanese. Uh, that's making the new Xbox game busted. Don't really know much about it. They're looking for a voice actor that can come in during these times to uh, do the voice acting for 30,000 yen. All food and stuff will be provided, but they hadn't really. Uh, they had to stop during COVID. But this is the only image that they've released for it. So anime, you may actually like this. Enjoy, Steve. Eat your food. But as you can see, they're holding an Xbox and you've got the Xbox wand. But it is supposed to be exclusive to uh, Xbox. God knows what it's going to be. What it's, it could be uh, a bullet hell game for all I know. But it's coming. Yeah, I thought you might like this anime compilations. Finally a game that you can't say it's not coming. Get your, no, no serious, no. No. At this point I could phone it in better. But yeah, um, I tagged Phil and ID Xbox and whatnot to hopefully they'll, you know, get in touch with this person and try and support them along their way. It does look like they're either a single person or a small, com you know, a small group of people doing it. Nah, you can't say that anymore, anime. I saw that, yes, up the top. So, you can't say that on this one. Not on this one. You can't say it. You can't do it. I don't accept it. You can't do it. You, you showed your hand too quickly. You showed your hand too quickly. So, we have some non-gaming news at the moment for this one. What do you think of this? Is that a W or is that a massive L? Do you think Keanu and Shadow's voice work? This is for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie 3.
I think it could actually work. I remember his voice from uh, the cartoons, and I think it could work. Uh, Leaf, you mean the band? Crush 40? The whole moving around at the speed of sound? Yeah, Knuckles worked as well. I do want to see the new TV series that they're doing with uh, the Knuckles one. Leaf, I've actually seen them performing live. Uh, the group. They were at um, Summer of Sonic 2010. In 2010. In London. And they were performing live. Uh, during the Sonic convention. It was really, really cool. And the lead singer that sang... The track from Shadow the Hedgehog was there also, and they played. He sang a few songs as well. Yeah, I've only been to a few, but that, it was really good fun. But yeah, I'm actually really excited for this. I, I think it could work and can add good value to Shadow. So to all you Pal World lovers. You know there's a new patch coming, right? Sully, you should watch the second movie. It's really good. Really good. But you guys like Pal World, right? Because there's an update. Uh, Steam version 2.2.0 has been released. Well, 0 0.2. Xbox version is under certification. So once that's passed, it will come out. Uh, they've corrected an issue that caused all Pal attacks to deal only half the intended damage. So if you're wondering why your Pals were hitting like potatoes now you know why Derek I'm playing way too much all over the place I really like the original Mario movie it was so bad it was good It was so awful, but it was so good. Those Goombas. <laughs> Those Goombas were great. You can't you can't go wrong with the original Mario movie. Uh, other fixes corrected hit detection in the latter parts of Nightmare Ray and Night Bloom attacks, reduced the jittering of sleeping pals so they no longer uh, look like they're suffering from some form of you know syndrome. Uh, you can now close the character editing screen after the antique dresser using the escape key of the antique dresser. And they corrected the other minor bugs. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, what was it? Du -du 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 -du. Mario. I think it was 1998 movie. Trade. This is going to get me so demonetized. Yeah, this one. It's 1993. This <laughs> is... This is so cool.
Night Night Free Bowser still gives them nightmares. I mean, how could that ever be Bowser? Look at the Goombas, man. This was such a bad movie. It was so good. This is one of those movies where uh, it pretty much lives with Street Fighter, the movie. Good shit. Now, this is what you call a good movie. Spoiler alert. So, Game Pass is getting a bunch of new games. For all of you enthusiasts out there. I have no idea what another crab's treasure is. Anyone actually know what that is? Another crab's treasure. Another crab's treasure. I really should have looked this up before. But I didn't. This should be amazing, right? Oh god, it's loud. I can't, I can't even reduce the volume. What is preventing me from seeing the bottom of this? Get rid of that. I'm not being funny, but why does this even exist? I am not getting copyrighted for you. This is not happening. Go away. Where is it? But Aiden Chronicle is going to be a good RPG. If you are a JRPG, if you enjoy JRPGs, this is going to be really good. Uh, if you like your roguelike games, this is really good as well. If I remember, this is a roguelike game. Have a nice death. Uh, so this one is supposed to be really good for roguelite players um aiden chronicles again if you like jrpgs you're going to really enjoy this this one used to be a stadia exclusive but it's now being ported over to all consoles uh tachi is already on xbox is coming to xbox as well But Unleashed, I think you should go back to Foam Stars, man. Hey, R for one, how's it going? My dude is My dude is jealous of uh Game Pass. Dude, you shouldn't be jealous of Game Pass, man. It's a good service. It's a good, good service. But again, Orcs Must Die is another one. Uh, NHL is EA's every six month offering. And this is supposed to be an RTS on PC. So if you're into that thing, cool. Uh, 
Alien Chronicles is not fodder. That is not fodder. This, if you're interested, it's a long-running franchise that people do enjoy. This one is just NHL. If you like NHL, you're going to enjoy it. If not, you're not going to enjoy it. This one and this one are probably fodder in my eyes. These four, they have their players. But hey, Unleashed, at least you've got a um, quantum error, right? You paid 70 bucks for that game, right? Yeah, I think Unleashed is drunk at the moment, chat. I don't think uh, anyone needs to take him seriously at this point. That's a drunk guy talking. <laughs> oh, you've always got baby steps as well. Hey, Rick Miles. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. My kid, 24, enjoys... Wow, 24, kid. You make it... How far was it <laughs> Oh, boy. But at least now, the Xbox isn't bound by parity, right? Developers can finally utilize the Xbox's full potential because for the longest time, they couldn't utilize it. They weren't allowed because PlayStation mandated parity. And so because the games are being built on PlayStation first, Xbox wasn't able to shine. But they are going to shine now. You know, Phil doesn't actually pick the games, right? <laughs> My dude is way too busy for that type of stuff. Come on, even you don't have to believe that he's not going to be sitting there handpicking games. But something I actually saw that I, I should have bookmarked, so let me see if I can find it. Um, it was regarding Final Fantasy sales. They've actually dropped a lot over the years. Uh, see if I can find it. Jesus. Uh... There was something I saw. Like, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan myself, right? But this inf these numbers that I saw were actually quite worrying. It really does feel like the era of Final Fantasy has come to an end. Yeah, th this isn't the one I saw. But it's close enough. So you got a Famicom, which is Nintendo... Then you got Super Famicom. Then you got to 1.5, and then you got like Final Fantasy 7, which was 2 million. Final Fantasy 8 was 2.5 million. And then you got Final Fantasy 9, which was at 1.9, 10 at 1.750. And then that exclusivity train continued with 12 at 18. 13 was on. Um, 
Xbox as well, 1.5. Then 15 crashed at 716. But what's interesting is the fact that 15 outsold Remake. I mean, they can run at 60. They're just pushing graphical fidelity. Show me one game on PlayStation that can match Hellblade's graphics. One. That has the lighting, the lumens, the nanites, everything. Show me one. I mean, at least once uh, Phil buys Square Enix, he'll go anywhere he wants. How are you going to cry when Phil buys Square Enix? How is it going to hurt your soul? Can you put it in text form so we can see how much you're going to be crying when it eventually does happen? I think a lot of chat is eager to see how you're going to cry when Phil announces it. But Final Fantasy 16 did even worse than Remake. Now, obviously, people are saying that Remake was because of COVID. But if that's the case, things are doing really bad for Final Fantasy in Japan. Oh, shit. Unleash is triggered. Unfortunately, money talks, and if they offer them enough money, everything is for sale. Derek, did you play the original? Hellblade. Even booty is for sale? You're damn right it is, Sully. <laughs> oh, we did, Derek. We did. The problem is... Right. The problem is, right? Games right now, developers right now, are pushing graphics beyond what a console should... The current-gen consoles can do. And if you're pushing it that aggressively and if you're pushing it to that high level something has to give it's not actually 900p though is it the uh, digital foundry has already proven that it's not 900p but um you know if you're pushing it to that level it's going to impact performance now, my question is, why do they need to hit it to that level? I mean, if it's a CPU um, bottleneck, that changes things. But if it's the GPU doing it, they could just knock, knock it down a couple of notches to improve performance. I think... Yeah, but Benaya, that only matters, that's only true if the PC version is locked at 30 right if the pc version is not locked at 30 then that statement becomes bullshit that's my point if that statement if the pc version isn't locked at 30 then that statement is no longer true uh final fantasy 16 runs at 720p in performance mode and it doesn't even run at 60 so, I really don't know where Unleashed is getting off his high horse, but a PlayStation 5 exclusive, which was built with the help of Sony Interactive Entertainment, they actually sent a team there to make sure they built it right. So, even with Sony's own developers, they couldn't get Final Fantasy 16 to run 
at native 60 FPS. The game runs at 30 to 45 frames per second. It's uh, pretty bad. I mean, Returnal is probably one of the only few games, right? And Demon's Returnal and Demon Souls, if I if memory serves, they weren't available on the PS4. Uncharted was, God of War was, God of War Ragnarok was, The Last of Us was, The Last of Us Two was. Um, what else have they got that's already out? I guess Rift Apart wasn't, so that's number three. So how many how many other games do they actually have that wasn't cross gen? I'm only I'm only picking up Returnal, uh, Ratchet and Clank, and Demon Souls. I think it is. And wasn't the Demon game that they released on launch thirty FPS anyway? Did they patch it later? I remember on launch it was 30 FPS. Uh, we don't have it. Uh, Amma, we don't have the global cells. But what you can see, what this is showing you projection of is the fact that in Japan, Final Fantasy has been dwindling as a franchise. It's lost the popularity. Clearly, after 14, people have lost, you know, it's lost its way. I mean, 1943 looks really, really good, right? I wonder what uh, frame rate that's going to run at. How's it going, Aussie fan? Rise of Ronin also looks doesn't look great. I mean, Derek, I've always said that the current gen that we're at right now released a year or two early. I think with everything that was going on in the world at the time, they should have delayed the next gen consoles by like a year or two so the world can get back on its feet. And they could have just continued working with the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. Um, I think that would have been a smarter move. But they decided that they wanted to go full corporate greed and go that way. Uh, Pikmin 4 sold 400,000 copies in Japan. Physical copies only. So that's not even digital. For context, it outsold Final Fantasy XVI's total sales so far. That's crazy. That is quite impressive. But Pikmin is Pikmin, right? I mean, Redfall now is actually a decent game. At launch, it was horrendous.
I think it's more that they're just trying to appeal to a different audience at right now, Derek. They're no longer trying to appeal to the original audience. They're trying to evolve. I mean, I have a lot of fun playing it. Have you played it recently? With a group? Benaya? Agreed they. I mean, what equals a game being good then? If you're if you're enjoying the game, what if, what what? So if I find a game to be totally shit and I'm not enjoying it, does that mean it's bad? Arthur, there's a lot, man. <laughs> Uh, I try to I, I I try to stay away from most of it most of the time. There's a couple of repeat offenders that do like to trigger me a few times, right? Unleashed, if you're still there. My dude's whole his whole bloody uh account is designed to trigger me. But they give me news! They give they give me sources, they give me stuff. I mean the AI is no longer the same. It's not like it was at launch. What year was Prey released? Oh god, I have no idea. Which one? Prey one or Prey Two? Well, we're definitely not talking about that prey. Five twenty seventeen. Yeah, it does seem like uh Japan really is not enjoying their Final Fantasy games. Interesting nonetheless. I really enjoyed God of War 2018, but I think uh, Ragnarok was just a bad game. Ragnarok had so much filler, so much padding. It just became such a boring game to play. I mean, I personally am still enjoying Final Fantasy 16, and I'm almost at the end. I'm going to finish it tomorrow, and if we finish it early, then I'm going to jump into Fallout 3. Uh, but, you know, the problem that 16 has, that I have with 16, outside of some of the bad side quests, is the fact that the frame rate is atrocious. It's absolutely just batshit bad why isn't it got a why isn't it god of war it has the god of war name and it was a good game i really enjoyed it now ragnarok had way too much padding there was way too much padding like you know they reused everything but they just and I didn't have a problem with them reusing like a lot of the assets. That I didn't have a problem with. But it was the way they made the user feel like they're an invalid to a certain extent. Where they had to explain everything all over again. And I get it. They, you know, people might jump into it new. But have something at the beginning of the game to 
but let the game ask you do you know this stuff yes okay we're not going to tell you about this stuff going forward something but it's just so padded there was no need for like a quarter of that game i mean i uh, i'm still trying to finish it i will do it at some point oh god barcelona are out that's a surprise by the way, did anyone hear about Marlon Gaming? Did anyone hear about him? I feel sorry for the guy, man. Uh, someone hacked his account and he's gone. His account is, is fully gone. Oh, it's back. The YouTube brought it back. Awesome. Because look, well, my entire channel is gone. All my videos. I guess it's over, guys. After putting in 10 years of hard work, please retweet this. My dude was all over the place. I reached out to him yesterday as well. He didn't get back to me. Uh, but YouTube, uh, as soon as you get a lot of people... Uh, making noise, they made you team YouTube jump in. I'm really happy that they managed it. I just want to say thank you guys for all the prayers and well wishes. The channel is officially back, thank God. Within one day, YouTube has worked closely with me to ensure a speedy recovery. Oh, that's good. I'm really happy for that, man. I'm re That's really good news. That's really great news. No, he was all over the place yesterday, man. And I, I felt really bad for him. Because it's it's like your worst nightmare. Uh, a, a, a couple of years, about a year ago. When I, just before I started this channel. I've got another channel which... Um, I had a lot of problems with someone that uh, I knew that had connections with YouTube. They basically uh, got my channel demonetized. And no matter what I tried, YouTube wasn't responding or anything. And I tried to create another channel to try and push people over there because my other channel had like 15,000 subs. Actually, it was close to around 16,000, 17,000. And this went on for about four or five months where the channel just stayed demonetized. I tried everything to get it monetized again. Nothing worked. But I knew who who uh, actually did it to my channel. And it was just it's, it's just one of the most horrible things that you can actually go through because you put all that effort in, all that time in. And so I decided at that point, I was going to try and take the content from that channel to the other, to a brand new channel. Um, that didn't really work. No one really followed through. They weren't willing to transfer from one channel to the other. And so I just told people to start unsubscribing because the channel was dead. I couldn't really do anything. And my brother in the background actually sent a legal uh, writ to Google. And after he sent that, a week later, they contacted him and said the channel's been uh, reinstated and that the demonetization was a mistake. But I, I obviously it wasn't 
because the person that actually did get it demonetized actually told me he was going to get it demonetized. And I knew that they had contacts with them. And this was all because uh, I didn't agree with them with Dragon Age, I think it was, or something. Something stupid. It was dumb. Oh, no, no, that wasn't it. They faked their death and I caught them. That's what it was. They faked their death and when I caught them out on it, they didn't like it when I exposed them. And that was their response by getting my channel fucked. So, it was a nasty, nasty time and my other channel has pretty much almost died because of it. I'm still trying to get it out of life support, but... It is what it is. So when I see shit like this happening, um, you know, I've been there to a certain degree and it's the worst feeling you can have after you've invested so much time in there. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to name names. It's not worth it, dude. They're not on Twitter anymore. Uh, well, they are actually on Twitter because I... <laughs> I actually accidentally found them again and they deleted their account for the fourth time on Twitter and recreated it as something else. So I have no idea who they are now. So after that, I kind of tried to rebuild my other channel. It didn't really work. Um, and then the ABK case came along and I studied law in university. I've got a massive interest in law even though I never really went on to practice it, I actually found the case fascinating and I saw a bunch of people online who really were interested in the case. So I started following it and reporting on it. And that's how this channel started. Uh, Taz said that I should basically just post it online because there's people interested in this content. And I thought, you know what? If people want to know the breakdown of the day's events and stuff, I'll follow it and just do that and it kind this channel kind of grew from that seed really uh Benaya, yeah they faked their death it was actually really bad because when we heard about it um we were all heartbroken and then we actually found him alive and kicking Well, the problem was there were some telltale signs that it was them. And even though they changed their identity on Twitter, you can kind of tell. <laughs> they keep getting caught alive. But, you know, as far as a content creator, yeah, I would. It would suck to. Or to get hacked at any time is horrible. 99% of the, these guys doing content creation and console war stuff. Are just playing a role they are they are that the majority of them are playing a role i mean i remember when my discord was hacked and it took uh discord two months was it two and a half months three months to get my account back i had to start a whole new discord although that was totally my fault where it got hacked that was totally my fault i got suckered in to um an indie company who reached out and asked me to try out one of their games and i said okay i would do it they seemed legit i looked into them they looked okay but they weren't and when i installed the game it put a it put a key logger on my on my PC and it took my well it basically overtook my session for Discord so they didn't need to two factor authenticate so this is why now on Discord I don't really uh respond to messages so if you are contact sending me a message on Discord like and you're not a friend or you haven't joined my Discord I see a bunch of requests at the top to respond I just ignore them now you only get burnt once, folks. You, you learn from your mistakes. But yeah, super happy that uh, he got his channel back. 
PlayStation fan or no, no one should, no one deserves to go through that shit. No one deserves to go through that. I mean, this one over here is a full grifter, right? Mr. Gas Giant over here is a full grifter, right? The house always Ah. <laughs> uh. But yeah. It's a... Uh... Interesting times. But it'll be interesting to see when the PS5 Pro is launching. I think that's going to be really interesting. When do you think it's going to come out? The PS5 Pro? Christmas? Do you think it'll be out in November? Uh, he now says that he never said anything about that. He denies all. Uh, he denies. He denies it entirely. Oh, really? September or late August? Hmm. They normally... I don't know when they release... I mean, they've only had one mid-gen refresh with the PS4 Pro. But the new consoles always come out around November. At least with Xbox, anyway. It's in black and white. There's no denying it. Uh, the PS5 Pro is real. Uh, Sony has started to uh, attack... And the issue takedowns on YouTube with people revealing accurate information. So it's real. It's, it's as real as it's going to get. Otherwise, why would Sony be issuing takedowns, right? It kind of, you kind of give it away when that happens. But I mean, GTA 6 is not going to run at 60 FPS. Even on the PS5 Pro. It's just not going to happen. Right, it's, it's not going to happen. And honestly, from what I've heard, uh, GTA 5, I mean 6, could be going all the way to 2026. Now, it'll be interesting if it does launch in 2026 in time for the next gen console from the xbox conspiracy theorists go crazy i might not be able to land on gas giants in starfield but i'm sitting on a gas giant <laughs> that's ready to erupt at my work desk Uh, 2025 for the PS5? If the PS5 Pro comes in 2025, then they'll need to maintain that for at least another... Oh, you mean um, GTA? Now, I've... I don't know, I've heard that... Uh, Things aren't going well for GTA 6. Things are not things are not going well for GTA 6. They're having a lot of uh, optimization problems. And they are trying to um, kind of blunt force it. It's not working. And you, you don't want to do that, right? But you also don't want to do um, what CD Projekt Red did. It'll be ready when it's ready, and then they'll release it completely and utterly broken. <laughs> oh. Uh, not really. 
Because the Series S, they can pretty much keep it at 30 FPS. Reduce the textures down to whatever it needs to reduce to. At the end of the day, regardless of what the Series S is, it's limited by what it can do, right? So getting it to run at 30 is pretty much all that they're going to do with that anyway. I don't know how GTA generally does outside of the Western market. I honestly don't. But it'll be interesting. And what I want to see now is how Xbox is going to push the hardware further. And what's going to happen with uh, some of the other Xbox games coming. I mean, the June update, the June showcase that's coming for Xbox is really going to be a really important showcase. Now, we still have a couple of weeks for the end of April to see if at least what I heard and what other influencers have heard is true regarding there being an announcement of some kind uh, or a showing, a demo or anything uh, by the end of April. So we're still waiting for that. But I think the June showcase is really really important for xbox especially in their current climate right now you know they really need to get some goodwill i can also maybe even see them shadow dropping something uh no that's not steve if it gets delayed the PC version gets delayed further because they're still working on the console version, not the PC version. They're going to start working on the PC version once the console versions are done. To be fair, the game did become ready eventually. They didn't say it would be ready at launch. <laughs> You're not wrong, man. You're not wrong. Oh, shit. Benaya came out fighting. He, 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 my dude sought violence this he, this evening. He came out and was like, you know what? I take your gears and I shit on your gears. By the way, chat, any, uh, I looked around and I couldn't really find anything to react to tonight. Does anyone know of any cool videos that we can react to that's not uh, Reforge? I'm kind of bored of reacting to that guy. <laughs> that was not intentional. This was not intentional. That was not intentional. Seriously. This was not... <laughs> Fuck's sake. God damn it, man. Dreamcast guy? Mr. Crater guy? I mean, I am so happy that this guy has actually got his account back. Dudes, I, I, man, I was so sad when I think React to King Trash, that, that guy just chat shit. Doc Doc? Which video? Let's react to a couple of videos and then we can think. Gamers hate Star Wars. Which one are we reacting to? We'll go with him, then we'll go Doc Dark, and then we will go King Trash, and then we'll call it there. Which one am I reacting to? Just please make sure it's not as bad as the last one he made, because that was awful.
<laughs> Atty, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Atty came out seeking violence. No way. EA didn't cancel the Dead Space 2. It was not even in the works. Great new game spotlight. I can't really see anything here. Is this literally just talking about the ugly character? Because I don't see why where the character's ugly. Why does people think that the character's ugly? I mean, I know people are always referring to that one clip where they pictured her in her ugliest possible form but guy okay, here and today we're going to talk about the extremely toxic controversy around star wars outlaws because this game while it's not even out yet has so much hate coming from pretty much every direction why does it sound like he's crying every single time Hey, look, Sully, he's sending you a kiss. Apparently, the main character is ugly. There's a season pass, even though it's single player. And now, if you want the entirety of the Star Wars Outlaw experience, it's confirmed it will cost you $130. Let's. Okay, okay, okay. See, this is where I have a problem, right? Wasn't these morons saying games at 70 bucks are too cheap? They should be a hundred bucks, they should be a hundred and twenty bucks. You know, developers deserve more money for their games. So, why is it a problem now? Is it because saying it back then was really popular and cool and it got you street cred? But now that it's actually happening, it's, oh my god, what the fuck? This is not happening. And my dude looks like a beaver. I mean, Spider-Man 3 is going to cost them £150, yes. If they, do, if they release it at £50 a pop. If they release it at £70 a pop. That game being split into three installments is going to cost £210. Exactly like Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it does not, Uma. Let's get into this because I actually have a lot to say. And not even as like a Star Wars fan. Let's get into it. Hi, I hope you're having a great if you haven't already. Now, just to be clear, I'm a person that plays a lot of video games, but I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I mean, if something has a good story like Thrawn, I'll probably... I've always been curious about the universe purely for the cool action of some people. So, I have been cautiously optimistic about Star Wars Outlaws, but a lot of people are very frustrated because the more we learn about it, the more it kind of seems like a scam. Now, I try not to use that word because it's very dismissive. I feel like as soon as you label something a scam, you're basically... Hey, look. At least no one is better than Rick Kekis, right? And I know some of you know who Rick Kekis is. Because that intro that he does, my God, that is stuck in my head forever. But Rick Kekis is so amazing, right? My dude is so amazing that at the time when the internet saw a 20 second teaser trailer for Destiny 2, right? When someone, when Destiny released a 20 second trailer, people questioned if Rick Hackis 
could make a 10 minute video from that 20 seconds and my dude did not disappoint he 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 managed to get not just 10 minutes but he managed 12 minutes from a 20 second trailer now if you're looking for someone that holds the crown for waffling with an intro that probably lasts about two minutes. Rick Hackis is your guy. Guy's awesome. Basically saying, not only is it not worth the money, it will never be worth the money. Well, it turns out that a lot of the parts of this game they've been advertising, like the Jabba the Hutt missions, yeah, it turns out that that stuff in the trailers is actually locked behind a season pass. A lot of people are already actually talking about boycotting the game or straight up saying that, hey, this is one of those things where you're going to have to wait until it goes on sale because right up front, it's definitely not worth the price. Now, the other major controversy that's kind of been stirring up, we're, we're going to go... I don't think she looks ugly here. I just don't think she looks ugly. What is wrong with people? Why does she why do people think that she looks ugly? I don't think she looks bad here. very deep on the whole season pass and all the stuff that's locked out because it's insanely stupid but the other part of this is uh, i mean can you imagine if she was walking around in a stellar blade outfit it would look so stupid what do people want her to be walking around in a bikini a lot of people kind of claiming that the character is extremely ugly i i guess to me I think this character is attractive, and even if she wasn't, like, this is the actress that she is. I mean, clearly they've uh, stretched that image and made it, you know, that's photoshopped, right? They've clearly fucked around with that image to make it look bad. Like, why would you do that? That's just sad. That is sad. The fact that you have to mess with a picture to make it look bad, that's just sad. Uh, gaming, he's gaming as trash. Uh, he sounds like he's crying all the time. It's facially based on, they've scanned this person's face. This is a person obviously photoshopping her to be uglier and crunched her See? face. That's a hell of a chin there. I'm definitely, uh, I'm with mischief on this. The character looks just like a beaten up version of her model without makeup, AKA, this is how she would look as an outlaw. Okay, yeah, her haircut does suck. I mean, my point of view is the fact that I don't mind a character being ugly, whether they are male or female, I don't care. If your character is ugly... Like there's, you have a problem when the little rat on the right is, looks cuter than you do, right? When the creature on the right is more adorable than you, then maybe you might have a problem. I mean, I play a lot of ugly characters. People who have... I mean, we know that, right? <laughs> At least he finally admitted it. <laughs> he admitted it, folks. He actually admitted it. He admitted it. You Listen. That I don't mind a character being ugly, whether they are male or female. I don't care. If your character is ugly... I mean, I play a lot of ugly characters, people who have watched... He admitted that raw. ...watched my reviews. Typically, I make myself the weirdest, stupidest, goofiest-looking guy possible in a game because I, I don't really care, as long as... Uh, anime, Fable allows you to create your own character. I expect the new Fable game to be no different. It's fun to play. I'm definitely down for it. And I think it looks pretty similar. I mean, it does just look like the model. I mean, outside of the actual jawline and the chin, over here, she's got it more pointed down. This one is more kind of wide. They are very similar. I know, right, Void Rat? I play a lot of ugly characters again. I mean... 
they're not that dissimilar. I mean, the hairstyle being different, that hairstyle probably wouldn't work in the era that this game is being based in. I mean, she's obviously being photoshopped, right? And the makeup and everything. That's been touched up to hell. That's not her and how she would look properly. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty uh, decent look. Yeah, like I said, the cheek and the, the cheekbone and the jawline is different. I don't know why uh, the Western world decides that they want to have that square jawline, but, you know maybe slightly more beaten up this is the part of it that i think deserves the debate deserves the criticism deserves honestly to be as roasted as it's being a lot of the internet is completely frying this game and it's because of this announced season pass so people are saying do not buy this up front we need to vote with our wallet and talk about why this is just so ridiculous so for 70 dollars, you get the game itself for a hundred dollars, you get the base game, the season pass, which is the two DLCs, Joppa's Gambit, and also Kessel Runner character costume pack, super duper, and three days early access. Whereas the ultimate edition is apparently uh, the Sabak Shark Bundle, so probably some extra costumes and stuff, a digital art book, three days early access, and the Rogue Infiltrator Bundle. Now this is one hundred and thirty dollars. Or or you can sign up to Ubisoft Plus for, I think it's like, what, 12 bucks uh, or f 14 bucks for a month. Play the game, complete it, be done with it, and move on with your life. And you don't even have to pay the full price for the game. That is insane. It's worth noting that Star Wars Outlaw is a single player game, which has caused some of the questions in the need for a season pass. The word hey, season Josh. implies hey, that Woodpit. Ubisoft is saying there may be more than one set of DLC, which I probably doubt. Here's the thing. It's worth pointing out that the game costs $70 on console, which means Ubisoft values the season pass as being $40 of additional content, and then the cosmetics and digital art book are an additional $20. Bucks. Ubisoft has yet to detail the two post-launch DLCs included in the season pass. Now, the game itself does look good. I'm, I'm not going to act like Star Wars Outlaws looks like a under-budget piece of crap. It definitely looks good. But to me, I almost get more upset when a good-looking game gets stupid DLC. Because now, instead of... For $14.99, you get the base... You basically get the Ultimate Edition unlocked. So you can play it three days early as well. So, sign up for a month. Play the game. Finish the game in a month, and then de cancel your subscription. Happy days! You just played Outlaws. It's a single-player story-based game. You finished it. You don't have to buy it. Just rent it for a month. I am definitely going with subscription for this. It's just fake outrage, Josh. Sully, it's not just one DLC. I think it's like three DLCs that you get with that 40 bucks. But uh, Elden Ring is one DLC, yeah. Elden Ring is, uh, the DLC is 40 bucks and it's just one thing talking about the uh, this game probably the won't be on game pass. The gameplay everybody is i think understandably laser focused on the fact that this does seem like a ripoff i mean it does suck especially though this is the part i actually want to talk about the most in depth star wars outlaws job at the hut mission is locked behind the season pass this deal is getting worse all the time and again as we were talking earlier sony locks stuff behind a one-year deal so you know at least people here have the option to play the content day one when sony locked destiny's uh free exotic weapons and exo exclusive armor did he complain about that when they money hatted a game mode for call of duty a whole game mode for a year or an exclusive um 
mission in Hogwarts Legacy? Did he complain about that? Fuck no. So why is he complaining about this? Because it gets clicks and views? Maybe I should start making fake rage videos too. Might actually get to that 7,000 subs quicker. This is the part where I think this directly is what leads the most to these talks of a boycott. It's that this is actually downright bad business. Ubisoft has already come under fire for trying to release the season pass, but now people are noticing its highly anticipated Jabba the Hutt mission is locked behind the season pass. As reported by Spanish outlet Area Youngest, Ubisoft's website is outlining the contents of the season pass. Oh god, $110 for the gold edition, which means if you want to play it early, beyond anything else, I do have this very deep annoyance. I, I have talked about this in multiple videos. It drives me nuts that they pay for early access. Like, that's the thing. I will, Josh. Okay, do you want to play Skull and Bones early? Do you want to play some big, gigantic game? Pay an extra 30 bucks. I, I mean... Even Microsoft has done this with games like Gears of War 4. There was a $100 edition you could play early. I think they did that with Gears 5. I, I mean, Sony, I don't think Sony has done that yet. I don't think Nintendo has done that yet. But a lot of the big AAA publishers like to do this thing where, oh, the more excited you are, the more we can milk you directly into my mouth. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't know what happened there. Anyways, okay. So... This $110 gold edition happened. and the $130 ultimate edition reveals access to the Gambit of Jabba the Hutt. Play the exclusive Gambit's Jabba mission at launch. Just as Kay is putting together her crew for the Canto Bent Heist, she receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself. And, okay, so... Uh, just to clarify, I think we will get the mod stuff this year. But... The DLC Shattered Space could could go into next year. Just to clarify, I think the, the actual you know the creation kit mod stuff should be landing this year. Here's the thing: a lot of people are basically saying this sucks because it is something they've actually advertised. Ubisoft has said in the past that players will have a chance to work for or even betray Jabba the Hutt as head of the Star Wars Outlaws criminal faction. So it's weird that, is that mean we're still going to be able to do this? Are we going to be working with Jabba the Hutt in some sort of way that isn't just this DLC? How big is this DLC? If it costs 40 bucks, is it actually going to be worth that rather significant price? Like, more than anything else, to me it's wild to think this practically doubles the cost. Does that double the size of the content? I mean, is a... A $70 game, half as much as a $110 game? Probably not. This is it. A lot of people are being like, this is why I will not defend these crappy early access editions with arguments like, oh, it's not taking away from other people's enjoyment. It's just a few days early. This is a jerk move to lock stuff that's otherwise going to be there day one behind an extra paywall. Now, some people have even pitched the idea and I do believe this, games that have crazy extra missions in the middle of it that are DLC, story missions that are actually locked behind a paywall, a lot of times it is cut content. This is stuff, if it's actually substantial, this is stuff that is intended to be part of the game itself. This is stuff that is 100% supposed to be part of the main story that they cut out in order to sell it for a higher price tag. Or... I mean, was he this defensive for Hogwarts Legacy when Sony got the extra content? Because I remember him. He was, you know, championing the fact that PlayStation got extra content, which essentially is cut content, right? It's an extra mission, so it's cut content. Uh, Josh, um, what, what will I be streaming? Uh, tomorrow, I'm looking to finish Final Fantasy 16. And if we have time after I finish that, because I'm pretty much at the end, uh, probably make a start on Fallout 3. 1 and 2 are just way too old for me. But probably make a start on Fallout 3. If there are any good mods that people know of for Fallout 3, let me know. I don't want any game-altering mods. Just stuff that make it look nicer. Or quality of life updates. PC, Starfield PC has an expansion size mod now. 
What do you mean, JB? You can see this. Nine Assassin's Creed games are currently in development, including two remakes. Yep, we've known about it for a while. I know they were remastering it, but I don't know if they've actually done it yet. Hey, Devastator member for six months. Chaos Griffin struggled in Fallout New Vegas on very... No way. Then again, I'm probably going to... I'm not going to struggle on Fallout tomorrow. I'm going to be great after Final Fantasy 16. It's going to be great. I'm going to pretty much complete the game in that single stream within three hours. I'm just not going to rescue anyone and just call it a day. All right, this guy just is chatting shit for no reason. I can't be bothered to listen to him anymore. It's literally, this video is already outstated. It's welcome. I don't want to listen to it anymore. Uh, what was the other video? Someone said Doc Dark. Uh, 1985. All right, what am I looking at with this dude? All he does is shorts. Oh, really, Devastator? That is no bueno. Before I continue with this, though, uh, yo, Devastator, what's your boy saying here, man? What's your boy talking about here? The, you 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 need to you need to sort your boy out. I think uh, as a Nintendo fan, I think he just exposed himself as being an absolute twat. It takes a special kind of person to be able to uh, expose yourself that that well. Oh, really? I thought that stuff was going to be only in the um, the creation kit. I didn't expect them to do it now. That's really cool. Uh, JB, I've been waiting for that sort of stuff. So, right, which, one am I, which, which one are we going with? Are we going with this guy or are we going with King Trash? And you said you sent me a video. Where is your video? Dungeons and Dragons was never good and is an insult to real fantasy. Okay, we can check out that one. Uh, I'm guessing there's nothing really here about King Doc Dark. All right, what was it that you said about King Trash Gaming? What up, gamers? What are we looking at, Bonaya? Bonaya, what are we looking at? Well, Josh, if they break the contract, then it kind of goes out the window. Yeah, which, which one? These are really long. I'm not watching 50-minute videos or stuff. My dude doesn't know when to make an actual 8-minute video. What, this one? That That's an hour long, dude. Uh, do you have a timestamp? No one in this chat's going to sit down and listen to this. Do you have a timestamp? I know I've got time for 
One hour and 12 minutes. Jeez. Yeah, I noticed about... Um, he made a video recently. I think I saw it where he packed his... Uh, Xbox Series X away. Look, the reality is PCs are superior in most ways, right? There's just no ways in... There's no way to hide that. They can perform better. They can do better. And they'll perform as good as you put your money in. But a console isn't designed to be better than a PC. A console is designed to be plug and play. You come home, you put your console on, you load the game, and it just works. With 16 times the detail. It just works. With 16 times the detail. And when you're ever wondering if it's going to work it just works unless you're a professor and you release the game brand new and then all bets are off <laughs> but you know consoles just work and at the end of the day that's the beauty of a console you know, one of the big things with Android and Apple is Apple is very straightforward. It's designed for a, you know, a three or four year old to be able to navigate around it. It's super intuitive, super simple. It's got big icons and it's designed in a way that anyone can use it. If you're using an Android phone, it feels a lot more complicated. It feels a lot more alien. It feels more like a tinkerer's, you know, phone. And for good measure because you can do a lot with an android phone because it's open source but you know consoles are designed in a way to just be easy to get into you press the power button the dashboard comes on you press a button the game loads it just works and you're off that's it and that is the beauty of a console the average console gamer doesn't care if the game is running at 30 or 60 they just want to get in on the action how do we know that the average gamer doesn't care? Well, during the height of Destiny 2, when they actually made a next-gen version of Destiny 2 available on the PS5 and Series X, on the PS5, I think it was something like 80% of the people that played Destiny 2 on PS5 were still playing on the PS4 version at 30 FPS, and Bungie was urging them to move over to the next-gen version. But the majority of the PS players were happy to be playing at 30 FPS because they just don't care. So there's that too. Devastator, I'm hoping that by the end of this year, they're going to announce that GeForce Now as a native app works on Xbox. That's going to be huge on its own. But yeah, for next-gen consoles, it's I've heard that they're going to allow you to install PC games. Is this the guy that you, you're telling me to look at? This doesn't look right. I feel like I'm being debated. This is the dude that says Samus Aran isn't a girl. D&D is not and never has been good. The idea that this tabletop game is some major influence on fantasy, on video games, on culture in general, is laughably stupid. D&D &D is just a cheap, knockoff product heavily influenced by superior fantasy writers like Tolkien. D Does anyone believe that D&D uh, &D is a cheap... Sound up a little. That's Max. I like Max there as well. He is nothing special. The only thing notable about it is that people used to play it in their basements in the 70s, right? When everybody else was like 
I don't know, hanging out at arcades or having fun or like just doing whatever, right? Like D and D is and always has been a complete joke. And it does kind of feel like recently a lot of people have been trying to weaponize D and D to try and ruin uh, certain other things in society. Right. The most recent example, I think, being Baldur's Gate 3, in which a lot of people try to use the D&D license to weaponize it against Zelda. Like, oh, this is way better than Zelda because it's Dungeons and Dragons, you know, completely failing to acknowledge that D&D has not had the impact on culture the way Zelda has. It's not as inspired as Zelda has. It hasn't innovated the way Zelda has. It's not like a culturally defining thing like Zelda is. Right. You're not wrong, Etty. Like, D&D is big in its niche and nothing more, right? Zelda is going to... Unfortunately, Steve, this is him. This is actually him. He came out the other day and said, women who can't procreate shouldn't exist. They have one function in society, and that is to give birth to babies. And if they can't do that, they're a waste of space. That is what he said. He said women shouldn't have careers or anything like that. Their only purpose in life is to procreate. And if they can't do that, they don't need to exist. That is literally this guy. There is no engagement there. I don't even understand how this guy has a platform after saying something like that. Uh, get a big budget Hollywood movie in the near future. And what does D&D have? Like mazes and monsters? <laughs> like, come on. Like, what does D&D have? Like, Steve, you're, you're treading fine like, line, yeah, boy. Like, talking about the toilet pizza and, like, vegan Steve. Like, no. Like, the reality is D&D is just a way for adults to pretend like they're kids again. You know, pretend they're going off on some crazy adventure instead of, like, you know, actually doing something productive in real life, right? The reality is D&D is just a waste of everyone's time. You are better off reading actual fantasy. You are better off playing actual RPGs on your Nintendo console, right? You know, Final Fantasy is better. Right, Dragon Quest is better, right? You know, SMT, like all of these franchises have just kind of like demolished the DD model. They're more creative, they're more innovative, they have better art styles, they have like more interesting like Devastator, I don't even think this is how you make an enemy of your fan base. I think at this point, this is how you make your fan base question reality and why this person is still allowed a platform. Josh, I will be streaming the Xbox Showcase and any other important news from Xbox, 100%. Mechanics, like, what has D&D done to really, to really earn its spot? As it has an amazing cartoon in the 80s. That alone makes D&D a legend. Come on, people must remember the cartoon from the 80s. I, I mean, everyone must have seen it, right? We all remember it, right? Don't leave me hanging, chat. Don't leave me hanging. Ah, this guy doesn't have a fan base. This guy's just weird. As this, like, as this thing that people pretend to care about. Like, the reality is nothing, right? Like, I think it's safe to say that D&D &D is essentially what it is because woke audiences can simply make the game as woke or anti-woke as as they want right the reality is people were able to take over the dnd &D sphere the same way they were able to take over the comic book sphere fear is that like nobody with an iq higher than 90 really cares about this stuff right that's the issue here i mean devastator is his number one fan <laughs> uh. Uh, Josh, what do I want to see at the show? I want to see Gears. I want to see Halo. I want to see the next Forza. I want to see Perfect Dark. I want to see uh, Everwild, if it ever does show up. And I want to see a couple of surprises. I want to, be, I want to see something 
that I'm not expecting. I know we've got all these games that are going to be there, like Avowed and Indiana Jones, but I want Microsoft to show us a game that no one is anticipating to be shown, no one really knows about it, and I want it to wow us like crazy. I just want to be excited for video games again. Right? You know, back when we used to watch E3, you know, and you saw the reveal for the first time and no one really knew about it and it just appeared and you just go crazy when you saw it. I, 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 I want that. I want that. That's what I want from the Xbox showcase. Whether we'll get it or not is another matter, but that's what I want. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about as well when I say that. But I just want to feel that sheer excitement for video games for something that I just wasn't expecting. You know, kind of like when I met Hideo Kojima. I was not expecting that and that was like a memory I'll cherish forever. If one company can pull that off is Phil and Sarah Bond. I hope so. Is that D&D was taken over, or I suppose was always handled by these kind of social rejects. Uh, D &D and yes, that was real. I haven't met Hideo Kojima. And so people were willing to defend the brand in spite of its inferior qualities to other products like it because it was woke. Right, because they could use it to further their agenda and like normalize certain social trends and try to convince people that like orcs are racist or whatever, right? You know, I, deliberately trying to subvert what uh, Tolkien accomplished with with Lord of the Rings, essentially. Like this is a culturally sub subversive br subversive brand. You know, you know that's another thing. We haven't really got seen a really good Lord of the Rings game in a long time. A Lord of the Rings game would be nice as well. I think, you know, if it's done right. Uh, when is the next big games event? June. June is the next big one. If Microsoft want them, they can buy them. Josh. I can see them doing it. Whether they will do it or not is, is another matter. But... The reality is Microsoft want to build their portfolio. But even if they bought Square Enix, they will not remove their games off PlayStation. All it will mean is that the games get ported over to PC and uh, Xbox Day One. And I think that's, you know, that would be a good thing for gamers. Right? That would be a good thing for everyone. But if Microsoft bought Square Enix, they would not make any of their games exclusive. Not one of them. They would remain exactly as they are, but just that their games would go to Steam, PC Game Pass, and Xbox Game Pass Day 1. Uh, Nintendo would get the games Day 1 as well, yeah. Oh, I didn't say they couldn't, Josh. But I, th I think that's what would happen. And that would actually be good for gamers, right? People always like to, uh, to, to bring up the satanic panic, but in reality, those people had a point. You know, people who played D&D were exhibiting weird behaviors. You know, people who played D&D did turn out like Spoonie. Right, they refuse to work real jobs. They spend their days just languishing in like former glory on some like board game they had when they were fifteen. Okay, like their entire identity revolves around dungeons and dragons. Like, how lame is that? Like, it's all, all right. If we want to talk about lame, right? If we want to talk about lame. How many times can a princess get kidnapped by Bowser before you have to start wondering does Bowser and Princess Peach actually have a thing going on and they're probably, you know, doing some bestiality shit behind everyone's 
backs in a castle somewhere. There's only so many times a princess can get kidnapped, right? And then we're going to come to Link and Zelda. There's only so many times that that sh story can actually play out the way it is. I mean, come on. How many times can Ganon actually come back and decide that he's going to do the same shit over and over again? I mean, either Link is really the most unluckiest guy, kid ever to grace whatever planet he, that game is based on. Or someone really has a bad, bad outing for Link. But realistically, if we're going to talk about lame storylines. Like at this point, I don't even think Zelda herself wants Link to succeed. And she's probably off somewhere doing whatever she wants to with Ganon and living a happy ever after. Just saying, there's only so many times that you can actually fuck up and get caught. It's almost impossible to, to separate Baldur's Gate 3 from Dragons and, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. To me personally, and I, I've addressed this before, it really does feel as if like all the competitors to Nintendo, well, the competitors to Nintendo in the current year, it's not about the consoles anymore, right? Because like Nintendo beat all the consoles. It's not about like the other competitive video game franchises because there are none. Like it's about like the established brands. You know, when you look at like uh, Hogwarts Legacy, the Harry Potter license. When you <laughs> Bowser is. Bowser and Peach's daughter. I knew it. I goddamn knew it. I told you. I told you. And Benaya gave me that skull face. I told you. Brett coming in there with the clutch reveal. You look at Baldur's Gate 3, it's the Dungeons and Dragons license, right? We're not competing with video games. <laughs> like my IQ, here it is. It's entirely... Co uh, competing against established brands that have like all this over across all this all these different genres, right? Just look at how many people cry about like Warhammer 40k. Oh, it, it's so badass! Oh, it's it's completely safe from woke culture, even though the 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 Emperor of Man is a woman now, and and uh, nothing cool has happened ever. Why is his eyes constantly closed? Is he ashamed to look at the camera? Like, again, this is uh, the reality we're in, right? Is that people will blindly worship the brand just because it's the brand. No matter how, like, terrible it is or how much, like, some other some other company stops it. Like, the reality is D&D &D was never anything special. The reality is video games have long ago surpassed the tabletop RPG format. Look, tabletop formats are good if you like it. I've tried to get my kids into that sort of stuff for a long time. And as much as I've tried, they don't really like it, which is a shame. But I kind of wanted to get into that sort of stuff myself personally, but failed emphatically. Yes, I don't understand why his eyes are constantly closed. I mean, Diablo, when he says this as a Nintendo fan, you have to worry, right? Take it easy, Game Trash. You have to worry when he says stuff like this. Chaos, if that last message came of me having a dig, it wasn't. Uh, What last message, Josh? Josh, never apologize, dude. Ever. I've I've got pretty thick skin. Um and it takes a lot to offend me. You kinda gotta have a pretty big thick skin in this when you're putting yourself out like this. Like I've I I've I've heard everything. I don't think there's literally anything you could say that could ever <laughs> see like that. So don't worry, dude. You're good. You're good. It could just be a lost in translation message or whatever. But quite honestly, I don't even know what the message you're referring to was that having a dick. So I'm all good. But yeah, 
I, you know, back when I used to play Anthem, and I still do enjoy that game, I was told stuff that was worse than my Call of Duty 360 days. So, I can assure you, it takes a, it will take a lot for someone to say stuff to get under my skin. So we're all good. But come on, how can you say this? That's just, what the fuck? Pretty much, Paul Morrow. I take if I'm pissed, you'll know. I will literally take no prisoners. So you're all good. The diabetes will come for him if it does again. Honestly, for me, I'd recommend you play Xenoblade over. Z you know, every time I start Xenoblade, I get bored within the first forty minutes. I can't get past the first forty minutes of that game. I've tried. I've tried so many times. The intro to that game is so boring. It's and, and I know RPGs start off really slow. I know. But it's so boring. I really need to try and get past it. Uh, Josh, I am looking forward to Avowed. I'm hoping it's really good. I mean, Anthem was good until uh, they killed the game. It really needed that content. Uh, I can't remember what that scout was called that we found at the end of the game. But they really needed to continue it. It had so much potential. It, you know, it had so much potential. Oh, it looks like uh, Jim Ryan holding back PlayStation is a thing now. Oh, this is not bad. Oh, damn, that that's awful. That shit doesn't come off. D&D's been around for donkeys. It's kind of had its popularities up and down, but it's never really... Uh, it's never been mainstream. Uh, those of us watching the Kong stream know all too. <laughs> you guys still need to pick another game, by the way. You still have credit for one more game. And you've almost got enough credit for another game. So you do have a you do have one extra token. By the way, uh, a couple of you have been asking me if I'm getting these coins. Uh, the dude, uh, Ben, uh, I tried to do a collab with him as well in order to get some of these. I could not. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do it with me. I'm guessing my social media numbers and my channel numbers are a bit too small. So just putting it out there that I have tried to... Get some of them to give out on the channel. I was unsuccessful. Uh, so tomorrow, tomorrow actually, Termin, I'm going to finish Final Fantasy 16. And then once we finish that, uh, I'm going to move over to Fallout 3. I'm going to try and play through free Vegas and Fallout 4. Yeah, Woodpit. Um, I, I reached out to the dude and I even offered to buy them off the dude so I can give away on my channel because I, I think those coins look absolutely amazing. So I actually tried to buy them uh, so I can give them away to you guys, but I will, the guy wouldn't even sell them to me. So, not much I can do. But hey, once we get to 7,000 subs, I will be doing a different sort of giveaway on my channel. 
Won't be the coins, but I'm sure you'll all be happy. Grounded? Mate, I have a lot of wee blood going through me. Uh, they're just collectibles, Woodpit. They're custom-made coins. A friend of mine is actually trying to make them at the moment. So if he does manage it with his 3D printer, he's going to send me some. But we're growing, Day Reezy, and I appreciate that. Yeah, Jamal is working on it. So if he manages... Oh, shit. <laughs> you know shit is bad when Gollum has more players than Redfall. <laughs> Come on, that's... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not good, man. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to reach out to the Mozzie fan. Uh, like I said, I asked if I, they can send me a few that I can give away to you guys. They said, not at the moment. Um, I asked to buy some, and they said, not right now. So I've kind of given up asking. Uh, Nunya, send me a link. I'll ask them and see if they'll take me on. Uh, allow me to... Uh, jump on and we can collab with them i'm still trying to do a collab with uh boom as well and also with risk it so i'm trying but obviously uh next month just so you're all aware next month may the 22nd is my uh eviction date from the property we should be moving a week before a week to 10 days before. So during that week, I'm going to update you guys again. So during that week, 10 days, uh, content's going to be very light as I'm moving. Hey, Lord. But that seems to be it. Yeah, Fallout 3 and Fallout Vegas. I mean, Fallout 3 comes before Vegas, so it makes sense to play Fallout 3 first. Someone told me to play Fallout 1 and 2. I looked at those games, and I said instantly no. Maybe if they were like 10-hour games, I could probably sit down and play through them, but I've been told they're like 40, 50-hour games, and that is not happening. Hopefully not, Aussie fan. Hopefully not, but we shall see. We shall see. But folks, I think I'm going to call it there for tonight. We've gone through everything. Uh, I'm still curious about this over here. I think that this is going to cause Sony some problems with Microsoft when it comes to parity clauses, if there are any, but we'll see. SBI dating sim when? When you join me, Steve. When you join me. I tell you what. If you embrace a Marcus Phoenix poster with Marcus Phoenix wearing a mankini, I'll play an SBI dating game. Yeah, yeah, but you need to embrace Marcus Phoenix wearing a mankini and then saying... That this is your favorite version of Marcus Phoenix. Then I will play the SBI game. <laughs> I think that's a fair trade. Because if I'm going down that hole, I'm taking you with me, buddy. I am taking you down there with me. 
All right, folks, I am going to be back tomorrow. Like I said, tomorrow is going to be a gameplay stream. If there is any major news happening tomorrow, between now and tomorrow, we'll open up with some of the news updates and then go into the gaming side. But otherwise, it's going to be a hopefully fun stream tomorrow. Quickly finish 16 and then move over to uh, Fallout 3 and see what it's like. All right. That's it. That's me done. Have a good night, folks. Peace out and remain legend. Uh, Nunya, did you send it to me on Discord? Uh, I don't see it on Discord. Maybe. I think that might be you. Alright, but that's it. I mean, it's 11 o'clock my time. We started at 7.30. It's a good time. We've run out of news as well, so I think it's a good time. No reason to overstay the welcome. Have a good night, folks.